Greetings, dear friends. It is my joy to come your way once again with the everlasting gospel. There are a whole lot of different kind of gospels in the world today. Most people who are set on just one of them say there's just one gospel. But there are many gospels. And I come to bring you the everlasting gospel. This everlasting gospel is mentioned in the book of Revelation. And it's also in the heart of every person who has been born again because the new birth is everlasting. It is everlasting. Your salvation is everlasting. Now, you're living the Christian life may not be perfect in that state. But in your mind, you may fail God. In your spirit, Christ is joined to you and you have been made one spirit. So glad to talk to you today about the everlasting gospel. We're studying in Romans chapter 6, and we've reached verse 22. This verse starts out by saying, But now being made free from sin. Now being made free from sin. Now how would you get rid of sin? Did you confess it? No. Sinners don't confess. Believers need to confess, but sinners do not confess. How then were they made free from sin if they didn't ask for it, if they didn't talk about it, if they didn't uh, beg God to do something to help them? You know what they did? They believed that Jesus Christ would save them. Where'd they get that faith? Sinners, mean sinners, ungodly sinners don't have any kind of faith of God. But they do have faith. For a measure of faith is given unto every person to be able to trust and believe that Jesus Christ is their Savior. And when you get ready to be saved, it's a thing that you have in your mind. I must be saved. I must be saved. I want to be born again. When you talk to God like that, then that measure of faith is going to surface in you and you're going to enter into the golden gates of your salvation. Thank God for his great, so great a salvation. The line says we are now being made free from sin. We are now being made free from sin. Now, what's in that line that's so important? It's the little word now, N-O-W. The little word now is in that line, and now introduces us to grace. Grace is always in the now. Grace is not something you believe for and days later it comes. Grace is something that is yours now. And that's based on the word of Christ on the cross when he said it is finished. Every single aspect and part of the plan of God that was given unto humanity was finished. It was over, it was done with, it was finished. And it's so important that a sinner when he comes to God, needs to know that the price is already paid for his sin. He may still be suffering for it. He may still be in trouble over his sin. But the facts are, when Jesus died and said it is finished, that was the end of human sin. Doesn't mean that men will stop sinning. Doesn't mean that men will not always be perfect and at times will be bad. Even those who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ could fail and would need help from the Holy Spirit to get back to where they belong in the Lord. But to be saved, the original salvation, man can do absolutely nothing about it. He's like a babe in a mother's womb. That babe in the mother's womb cannot eat, drink, or provide for itself. It's dependent upon the mother. Even when that babe comes out of the mother's womb and is birthed openly, he can do, she can do nothing within themselves. That's the way it is with salvation. Salvation is already bought and paid for. Nothing humanity can do to make it work. They can't believe on God till it works. They can't have faith in God till salvation works. They have salvation already provided for them on the cross of Jesus Christ, and all they need to do is to believe that Jesus had died for their sins, and they shall be saved. There's nothing they can do within themselves to be saved. Now, after you're once saved, to stay saved, 
you have to do a little things, a lot of little things yourself. What are these little things you do for yourself to say, say, you get mad at mama, you get mad at grandpa, you get mad at your next door neighbor, get mad at your boss. Uh, you're a Christian out of order, and you need to repent of that. That's where repentance comes in. Repentance has been granted unto you as a part of your salvation. We who are in Christ Jesus have been made by Christ Jesus wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. These all came when you were saved. Now then, these are the parts that have been put into you to make you work and operate as a born-again Christian. But the birthing takes place on God's part. The birthing is a thing with God. This line says, and now we are being made free from sin. Now. I have long believed that that word now means that when you finally catch up with what it is you need to do to please God, that's the now. The now. And when you get ready to do that, the now says you can do it right now. If I'm talking to someone who has not confessed their sin, they are a believer. They are one who accepted Jesus as their Savior. They have to trust God that He did the right work to them. Like a babe in a mother's womb, He took care of them at the moment of their inception. But now that they're out of the womb, now they need to trust God for certain things and to live a certain way. Will they lose their salvation? No, that was a thing of God. That was a thing of God, not a thing of them. No man can touch you, no preacher, no doctor, no church, no work of humanity, not even your own works can help you when you are born again. That's a God thing. That's the way God planted it. He, he himself would birth a new race of people, a new group of family members, children of God. Other places the scripture says, now are you the children of God. That's important because it wants you to know that even though you don't have the right feeling for that, and even though you may not be walking in the light of that or obeying what you know about that, right now you can be a child of God because that's grace. That's in grace. When you got saved, it was in grace, saved by grace. Now that you are saved, your many mishaps that take place in your life means that you're still saved. You're still saved. You're not where you ought to be. You're not living for God right. And you're not getting benefits from your salvation. But you are saved by His grace. Now it says, the line says, for now being made free from sin, what happens when that takes place? When you're made free from sin, what takes place? You become a child of God. There are several scriptures that say that. Another scripture, as I've already said, says that you are now sons of God. This scripture says you become servants of God. That's good. Now, now that you are saved, now that you are where God expects every person to come to by grace, now you are a servant of God. You have become a servant of God. Or maybe you're just becoming a servant of God. But the scripture is clear. Now that you've been made free of sin and become servants of God, you have your fruit unto righteousness. You have your fruit unto righteousness. Now, what is a Christian doing with their life? What do you do with your life? It depends on what your life is worth to you. If you have given up your life to Christ, then you have no worry. You have peace. If you have decided that I'm going to be a little bit of my own and a little bit of God, you are frustrated. Or maybe you said, now that I'm saved, I'm still the same old me and I'm just going to wrestle with it the rest of my days. 
You don't have to do that. There you're tricked by the devil. Because 1 John, the first chapter, tells us something very important. It says, And if a man say he has no sin, he lies, and the truth is not in him. That doesn't mean that constantly you're full of sin. It means that if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. You have an advocate with the Son. They both get together on this and say, well, let's watch and see what dear Joe's going to do. If he confesses his sin, if he's heartfelt in what he believes, then he is saved. That's what salvation is. No, salvation didn't come by anything Joe did. And salvation doesn't continue by anything Joe does to make it work. Now, if Joe gets to work for God and does what God wants him to do, that's another matter. If he disobeys God, if he lies, if he doesn't treat the brethren right, if he doesn't love the brethren, numbers of things the scripture has an if he does not do connected with it. He doesn't lose his birthing. But he has a tangled up life. He has a life that is not laid out on the cross. So this is what our message is. It is the Christ life that is in us. It is not us. It's not something we did. The life that is in us is Christ. Now, I do a lot of things, but those are soulish things. They're soulish. But when I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, I received life. Everlasting life. That's what this scripture says. Last line of it says, You have your fruit unto holiness, and the end, everlasting life. Can a Christian live a life totally free of sin? I expect some might, but it's doubtful. Bad thoughts hinder our relationship with God. Hating somebody really hinders our relationship with God. Not making things right with others is a major thing with God. Because grace has already prepared the way. Grace makes it possible for you to say, friend, I forgive you. Friend, will you forgive me? You can say both of those things because grace has not failed to make a way for you to do it. Grace is always there to help the Christian along and to keep the Christian what he ought to be. I believe we are saved by grace with no touch of man's works in it at all. And we've entered this everlasting life. The born again must have an everlasting life because when they go to heaven, they'll have the same soul. They'll have a new body, but the life will be Christ. Christ in you. Paul says Christ in you is your hope of glory. Paul said the life I now live now in the now is Christ. Is Christ. Did he ever need to confess? I'm sure he did. Did he ever confess sin in his life? I'm sure he did. But he knew one thing. I have the everlasting life. I am a believer that Jesus Christ has saved me. Saved me at the cross. And this is what I believe in. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the scripture notably says, and thou shalt be saved. My message to you on this broadcast is not primarily in getting saved. My message is what happens to believers after they are saved. So many wonderful scriptures help us to see and to know, understand that. And I'll be talking with some of these, about some of these things, 
on the broadcast this week. I trust that you turn and hear me. My time is gone for right now, but I'll be back later. God bless you.